So welcome to your second lesson looking into Boolean logic and looking into Boolean algebra. And the next step we're going to look at is Carly maps. Now, previously uh, we looked at doing some simple logic gates and in the lesson I would have given you some worksheets also getting you to join some of the gates together to help you understand this. But what we need to do is actually manipulate expressions and actually break down some of the maps uh, so that we can simplify them. So Carnot maps were a way of actually solving more complex problems. So what you can actually do is you can look at the map and you can see where the ones and zeros occur and you can actually spot some patterns. Whereas using truth tables, it's actually sometimes quite hard to spot the, the pattern in the gate, if you like. So Carnot maps were used to help us spot the pattern in the logic circuits. So the general rules that you need to remember is Example one, if A is one, the not A is zero, therefore not of zero would be one. Now these are simple rules that will help you and they will become clearer as you watch the rest of this video. Right now they might be slightly confusing to you. All right, so what we've got here, if you imagine the input was one, so not A, so if the input was one, the not of that is exactly the same. That is why it is A, okay? Basically, whatever you put in is what you get out. That's what that means, all right? Now, then we have example two, A, and the not of A is equal to zero, or A, or the not of A is equal to one. So these are some basic rules that we use in our Boolean algebra, which will become clear as I start to simplify some of these expressions with you. So, Carnot maps. The first thing you can see here, this is an example of what a Carnot map looks like. So what you can see here is in this situation, A or B is represented. Because what you can see here is A, so if you separate this into two separate patterns, that is A and that is B. And it will become clearer as we go through. So basically what you've got here is A or B because you cannot actually group the pattern together as a free and that will become clear as we go on to the next slide. So they were designed and put together and the next slide will actually help you break this down. So here's our first Carnot map. Now all you do is you start at the top and you work your way in. So we've got A, B, C, and D. And as I move forward, you'll see where the placement goes. So moving forward, now that we've populated our Carnot map, what you can see is you can spot a pattern. So what you've got here is one pattern here on your left, Uh, sorry, on your right, and another pattern here at the bottom. Now, this one is independent to B. So what this basically means is that A must be turned on for this pattern. It doesn't matter if B is off or on, A is what is occurring here. And the same is occurring here. If B is on, it doesn't matter if A is off or on. So that is B or A. So, and if you look at this, you can see that this is the OR gate anyway. So we looked at our first pattern, which was A. And as we put it together, you can see we end up with A or B because our, we've got one pattern here and that is equal to A and this pattern here was equal to B. So we're going to move on and go on to our next slide. So our next Carnot map, sometimes you'll notice that you have patterns like this where all of the switches are turned on. And sometimes it can be quite tricky to spot that pattern, but basically if you have a look here, it's not 
really independent to any specific letter. So what we end up with is one. So when you have zero, it doesn't matter whether zero is on, it doesn't matter whether one is on. In something simple like that, the output is simply just one. All right. Now, this time we have the opposite to what we looked at before. You'll notice that what we've got here is A must be off and B must be off. Now, we know that that is a not gate, so that is not B, and we know that is not A. So that's two separate expressions there. So we've got not A or not B. Uh, some of you may know that as a null gate. So that is not A or not B. Now they do start to get slightly more complicated the bigger these Carnot maps get. That's why when we start to use free variables, we need to simplify it and break it down. So what I've got here is all my possible outcomes and F. Then what I've got over here is B and C, and we also have A. Now, what can you spot straight away? There is a pattern down the right hand side. If you have a look, that basically means that all of A must be true. Therefore, we're looking at A. And then we also have, so there is A. Then we also need to look at this section in the middle. This section in the middle, if you look, this is actually B. Because what this is saying is B can be turned on no matter what. If A is off or A is on, we've got B turned on. Because if you look, C is one or zero here. So B is turned on in both of them. So that is our common pattern. Therefore, the answer here is B. So what we end up with is A or B. Moving on. So this is another one. So we've got our first section. Right, to explain why this is not C, you can see our input's gone in as a zero. So this means everything is a not. So that section there, that pattern there, is a not C. But now we've got this other pattern left. Again, similar to our previous slide, that is A, because if we have a look here, A is on, A is on, but it's independent. B can be on or off. And you can see C can be on or off, so it's independent. So we have ended up with not C, or A. Now these start to change slightly. So let's have a look. So this one is slightly different. You've seen bigger groups before. This one is separate. So what we've got here is A and B. Because if you look at the input, A and B must be turned on in order for the input, for the output to be true. So that is A and B. Now, Carnot maps don't always have to have patterns like this. Our patterns can get more complicated. Now this one, we need to wrap it around. So you imagine this is a four way pattern here. This actually represents not C, because if you look at the input here, C was zero, and it doesn't matter what A is or what B is, whenever C is a zero, the output is true. So that is a not C. And you can test that by actually trying the not C on other other options as well because if that was a if that was a suddenly became a zero yes it did so that works you can check your expressions on other parts of the maps 
then we also have this one, which is A. So you can see that A must be true in this situation, but C, but a not C. So again, you look for the pattern. There's a common pattern here that both of these are off, but the the outcome is true. So that is a not C and A. So A must be one, a not C would make that an and gate. Okay? So that is a true. Now I realize I've gone through that quickly. Obviously in the lesson we have more time to go over that. But this is just a quick reminder and it shows you what some of the expressions look like in Carnai Maps. I hope that is useful. Uh, any questions, just drop me an email or come to me in class. Again, I realize that was quick, but if it was helpful in any way, please subscribe and I will put up more videos. Thank you for watching.